life of Jesus that he was able to see if you really want to know what the Father's like, look at me. Find everything that the Father is. And I thought, well, you know, God, there's so much that we don't see this in the body of Christ. There would be a whole new operation of God's grace, a whole new appreciation and excitement in serving God if we understood the glory of the Father, who the Father is and what he desires. And so Paul lays this out. It's God's glory, the Father's glory. It's his inheritance. Everything is centered in the Father who has now been manifested in his Son to the glory of his excellent name. This is what he desires. And so I said, Lord, it's, it's so important that we understand this because if we're going to get people to walk out their spiritual life with you and they don't have revelation of who the Father is and intimacy with his Son, how can this thing ever be lived out? And it becomes a chore, and I know that. When we were teenagers growing up, everything was wrong. So somebody said, what could you do? Well, they said, well, what couldn't you do? Well, they said, well, let's talk about things we could do because it's less. Uh, because there's more things we couldn't do. And so uh, the things we could do is just about, about five things that seem to be legitimate. Now, I know we've gone overboard in the church today that, you know, we've let down guards and the world seems to be flooding in. And we need to have some barriers. We need some restrictions. But everything was don't do this. You can't do that. You can't go here. And everything was a... a a thing of, of regimentation. And it wasn't an experience or, or experience with God or an intimacy with God. And so there was a whole new awakening that had to go on in my soul. Now, I had been in ministry for years when this was happening. And I said, how come this was never brought to me? Maybe I was slow. Maybe it was being preached. Maybe it was taught in Bible school. And it went over my head. Something was wrong. But I had to discover the Father for myself. Perhaps the blockage was so great in my own thinking, in my own life, that the wall had to be broken down. But when I discovered the Father, you cannot describe how wonderful God is. For God so loved the world. I, I could not see the love of God. I could only see the judgment of God. It was always God's going to get you. I go to bed at night and kneel down and say, Oh, Lord Jesus, don't come tonight. I've had a bad day. You know, like, it's not a good time for you to come. You know, come after Sunday night when we're really on fire and we've been at the altar in our old Pentecostal church in Cambridge go, and when we all were renewed again and filled up again. That's a good time to come, Lord, Sunday night. <laughs> Toward the end of the week, you know, it really peters out and we're glad for Sunday again so we can build up again. But, you know, Monday, Tuesday starts to get weaker. So uh, if you're going to come, Jesus, plan it to come on a Sunday night. Because we're all fired up again. How many know we've been there? And, uh, but that's not how the Lord wants us to live it out. There is a place near to the heart of God. A place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Then you can look up and say, Our Father. So many times I said, Oh, Father. Father, here it's me. Your son. You know me as son. And he's so gentle. There are times he will reprove. But it's not in that fearful way where you cringe, waiting for the blow to come. He will sit you down and he said, now I'm going to have to chastise you in this one. It's going to be a moment yeah. in your life, but I love you so much, I can't let you away with this one. Right. But he, he explains it. It's not a relationship. He discusses it. He doesn't beat you up and put you in a corner or lock you away in a room and say, you can't come out now until you know I call you out. He explains what he's doing. There is a whole new appreciation of the Father heart of God that has released me into a new dimension of his presence and of his ministry. Because it's no longer my ministry. It's his. It's his ministry. It's his power. It's his exceeding glory. It's his inheritance. We're all been brought into the wondrous grace of Jesus that we can live up now our walk with him knowing that we've been positioned in him, as in verse 6 of the second chapter of Ephesians. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. He has raised us up. He has situated us with him in heavenly places. He's not leaving us down there. He's taken us. He's brought us into the fullness of his life. He's taken us, and now we're seated with him in the same resurrection glory of his own dear son. 
So we, we know positionally where we are in Christ. It's a wonderful place to be in. Amen. We're hid with Christ in God. We're hid with Christ in God. Let that seep into our inner spirit today. You're not struggling to please God. You're not struggling to walk with God. You're not being forced or manipulated to please Him. And if you don't, you're going to get the beating over your head. No, no, it's a, a life with joy. Jesus is the center of our joy. Yes. He is the excitement of our living. If we can bring this back into our church again, Amen. back into our lives again, Hallelujah. there will be a holy work of God, yes. a divine release of the glory of the yes. Lord, yes. and a divine excitement in yes. serving Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you can do a little personal study here, Pastor. I'll set you up here for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, to walk out after you, you've got that book of Watch the Knee. But in the, in the fourth chapter, it, it tells us in that um, verse 17, This I say therefore and testify of the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Their minds are not in tune with God. They walk in the blindness of their own heart. They think after the thinking of the natural mind. We're encouraged that we're not to walk as other Gentiles walk. There should be a distinction about the walk of God and the lives of God's people. Amen. We're not like the world. We're called out from the world. We're called to be separate and holy children of the Most High and Holy Father. Amen. We are to be like He is. Yes. That we can say, as Jesus, you want to see what the Father's like? According to my life. How many have heard the expression, he's a chip off the old block? Yeah. Like father, like son. Yeah. You know, there's something good about that. Well, there's something that could be wrong about it, too, if the, the right modeling hadn't been there. But we are to be the reflection of him. Jesus reflected the glory of God in his face, as in the face of Jesus Christ. In that 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it speaks of the glory of the Father being shone in the face of Jesus Christ. We are to be so imprinted with the glory of the Father that we are to be marked as His children and that we walk out. Three areas it says here in that fifth chapter. Verse 2, walk in love. Verse 8, walk in light. Verse 15, walk circumspectly or walk in wisdom. Now all of these points will take great time and we don't this morning I'm just setting you up with it. You can do a little study and perhaps pastor if he feels so led to bear this out as out of a relationship with the Father. We don't have a mind like the world anymore or walk as the Gentiles walk. We walk in the Spirit. We have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ knows the thoughts of the Father. And when you have the thoughts of the Father, then you walk in the ways of the Father. When you walk in the ways of the Father, then you do the will of the Father. Isaiah 55 brings us up. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways higher than ours. Yeah. And we can never walk in the ways of God without the thoughts of God. It doesn't happen. Yes. You walk out in the ways that you walk because of the way you think. So if we have the thoughts of God, then you walk in the ways of God. Yeah. You'll never have to struggle trying to say, am I doing the will of God? Because when you have the thoughts of God, you walk in the ways of God, and the ways of God will fulfill the will of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it takes the struggle. I, for years, struggling, trying to oh, do your will, God. Oh, what's your will? Oh, my God, what's your will? Battling, battling, trying to figure out God's will. When I discovered who the Father is, and God has thoughts operating in my life, you automatically walk in the ways of God. Right. And the ways of God fulfill the will of God. Right. So it takes the struggle out. You have a whole new concept of God. I see some precious young people here. Grasp the wonder of the Father. Don't be ashamed to, or afraid to come to God and say, Father, show me yourself. 